47,000 vacancies for nurses at the moment. 47,000 nurse vacancies not filled. Mm -hmm. Aside from the issues of what's happening more widely in the NHS, aside from the fact that inflation is going up faster than, than pay, if there's a big shortage of nurses, isn't the right thing to do, isn't the market thing to do, to pay them more money? Well, it may well be, and that's one of the reasons why the independent pay review bodies, which we support, which the unions uh, generally support, or at least used to support, uh, take into account recruitment and retention in considering their recommendations for how much we should pay not just nurses, but any other public sector worker that's part of a pay review body process. And that's the right way to consider this. As an employer, acting on behalf of the taxpayer, we have to take a number of things into consideration. As you say, one absolutely critical one is how do you recruit and retain sufficient people? Another is affordability for the taxpayer, for the country at large. And another is the wider consequences for the economy and not entrenching inflation and seeing public sector pay contribute to domestic inflation that could be damaging to everyone across the country, whether they work in the public sector or beyond. And those but are the factors know, Robert, that are considered Robert, you know, by that as pay you know, as an literate person, the one thing you can't do is blame private or public sector workers for inflation at the moment. It's happened because since the evidence went into the pay review body a year ago, there's been a war in Ukraine, a huge spike in oil and gas prices around the world. The problem with your argument on the independent pay review bodies, look, of course you should stick to the pay review bodies, but sometimes events change. Mm. And inflation has turned out to be massively higher than the pay review body thought when it made its recommendations. And the reason why staff shortages have got so much worse is because people's real pay is declining. So I'm just saying, you know, kind of logically, surely when Steve Barclay is reported at the weekend to be asking the nurses to lobby the Treasury for more money, and when he is reported to be wanting an extra payment now, he's right, because that is the only way to solve, solve the staffing crisis in the NHS and the 47,000 nurse vacancies. I mean, surely that is the logical thing to do. Well, I think you have to balance that against affordability. You know, wh what can the country afford? We currently have taxes at a very high level. We're investing record sums in the NHS. And so it is right to take a broader view of affordability. Uh, I, I also think that pay is not the only factor that affects staffing within the NHS. It's clearly an important one, as it is in, in any line of work, uh, but also conditions, and uh, levels of stress and strain in the NHS, particularly drawing in immediately after COVID, have played a significant part in some of the retention challenges that we're seeing in nursing, uh, for example. And so those are conversations that we should be having, and in fact are having, with the unions and with other representatives. Uh, Steve Barclay and other ministers in the Department for Health have been meeting with the unions to talk about pay for next year, but talk more broadly about how we can try to make the job of a nurse the most fulfilling one that's possible? Are there any further flexibilities and support that can be put in place in terms of training and lifestyle to encourage more nurses to stay in the profession? As I say, that, that isn't exclusively about pay. Yeah. Uh, but what we have talked now in recent days to the unions about is pay for next year. Okay. And we've laid out very clearly our views on the likely path of inflation, the affordability challenges that we're facing, and are discussing that, I think, in a spirit of collegiality and well, reasonableness yeah, with uh, the nurses. Look, we heard from Pat Cullen this morning uh, from the Royal College of Nursing that the talks that they want, the negotiations they want about pay have not commenced and that the strikes will go on. That's an intolerable situation, isn't it? We cannot have baked in to our already crisis-hit NHS more nurses' strikes. What are you going to do to fix it? Well, you're right. The, the strikes will clearly have a significant impact on the, the treatment of patients across the country and, our, in particular, our ability to get the backlog down as we try to move out of the long shadow of COVID and uh, put the NHS on a more sustainable future. That, that is why we are in those discussions uh, about next year's pay with the RCN and with other unions. I don't think, though, uh, going back to Ed's point earlier, that it would be sensible 
uh, or prudent to rip up the independent pay review bodies because this year has been a, an unusual, last year has been an unusual year uh, in terms of okay. inflation. Yes, you have made I, that point. I think point. the independent we, we, pay review bodies are absolutely essential okay. because they take the politics out of this process and Robert, try to ensure that the different parties come together. I think you've made that point. One other question, just to clear this up.